Used to the city, now we got our own land Life's getting real busy, busy. None of it was ever planned Got the crib looking pretty, pretty. With a garden full of plants, plants. And we built our own committee yeah. From the bottom we advance yeah. Back to our roots, roots. Now we get back to our roots yeah. Put on your boots Put on. It's time to go take off your suit so. Back to our roots yeah. Yeah. Now we get back to our roots yeah. Put on your boots It's time to fun with Cheryl Swoops Right now Right now another edition of Back to Our Roots Homestead. So today I wanted to address um, a question. So when we started the channel we asked any of you out there who might subscribe, ring the bell, um, to interact with us, ask us any questions, any advice that you can give us. Um, so we actually had someone send in a, a question the other day regarding the buckets and I wanted to address that question in case there's anyone out anyone else out there who has a, the same question so the question was the first part was do we put holes or drill holes into the buckets um, and yes I don't but my husband does so what he actually does if you can see he just takes a drill and he can explain it better than I can and he just drills several there's no I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to how many uh, but enough so that the water won't sit and it can drain. So he drills some in the bottom of the bucket as well as on the lower portion of the bucket all the way around. Um, I don't know, babe, how many would you say are that you drill? A lot. <laughs> yeah, so if lot. you can see, they're all around the bottom of the bucket. So that was the first part of the question. The second part was why did we decide to grow our vegetables in the buckets? And for a few reasons. The first reason being to, to show anybody that regardless of how much land you have, even if you don't have any land, if you have a patio, a balcony, a porch, anybody can do this. Just buy you a few buckets, um, drill holes in them, get your soil, whatever vegetable you want, whatever herb, um, and you can start from there. That was the first reason. The second reason is, like we've said before, this is our first time doing this. Um, so we didn't want to start by growing our food into the ground. We wanted to start off with the bucket so that if it didn't work out, it's a lot easier to just take the bucket and get rid of it. Um, or start but, over. Or start over. Yeah, to get rid of it and then start over. But um, seeing how well things are going so far, thank God, um, we will probably start growing some of our um, herbs and vegetables into the ground pretty soon but um, I hope that answers your question and if anybody else has any more questions please submit them to us and we will respond to you so I'm gonna sit this down and I'm gonna just move over here just to show you guys a little bit of what we're doing today um, my husband is actually laying down this weed barrier um, it's just simple weed barrier we bought with some staples and I'll let him explain to you exactly why we're doing it, how we're doing it, and yeah, I'll turn it over to him. Well, we're not growing in the ground, so it's not the same as someone's growing in the ground. They use the weed barrier to stop the weeds from actually um, hurting the, the, the plants that they have in the ground. With us, we're doing it more so as just to keep it neat and clean and keep the... Um, uh, the weeds from growing all around the, the buckets like uh, like they did over in the watermelon patch so it is a little different because we're growing in the in the in the buckets so it's not really bothering the soil or anything that's around the plant but it just looks cleaner and it keeps a lot of weeds out and you can't mow in here now because the plants are here so I think that's the best way to do it is to keep the grass down and eventually we'll kill the grass and then we can till this soil and we can grow into the ground if that's what we choose to do. So right now I'm just laying down more um, uh, weed barrier. Uh, we got about a third of the garden, I think, already done. Uh, and we have about 50 uh, buckets on that. I think if we do the whole garden, we can get about 150 or 160 buckets, which is a lot of plants because we're not growing to make any money. We're just growing... Uh, for our family to uh, have 
uh, food for us to eat. Of course, we do give away some of the um, stuff um, to our friends and family, but for the most part, we're just growing uh, stuff for us and our boys and our immediate family. So that's what we're doing. This is where we are and on to the next thing. Right, guys so I figured I would show you guys what we do with the vegetables that we're pulling from the garden I'm sure some people are saying they pick all this food they grow all this food what do they do with it so tonight I'm actually going to show you um, what just a dish I make with my squash okra zucchini a few peppers and things like that but my husband is doing the meat and this is a smoker that he, my brother, and my uncle built. I'll just give you guys a little sneak peek. Don't call the fire department. It's just back to our roots. So we got some uh, ribs in there and some chicken. So this is just actually going to put the smoke taste into the meat. Then he'll actually, excuse me, goodness gracious, then he'll actually cook it in the other smoker. So, this will be dinner tonight. All right guys, so we finished laying down the weed barrier. And now in these buckets, what we're gonna do is plant some um, corn. This is actually called peaches and cream corn. We started these from seeds. That's why they're actually in these cups. We, we had them sitting in the herb garden. Now we're gonna move them to the big garden where we're gonna plant them in our five gallon buckets. So we put two seeds in pretty much every one of them. So what I'm gonna do when I plant it, I'm actually gonna take it out and kind of be very gentle with it, but I'm gonna pull it apart and I'm actually going to put both of them in. I'll end up putting two in the bucket. And the beans, we're gonna do the exact same thing with them. So um, I'll actually go through and let you see a few of them the way I'm gonna do it. And I'm not saying it's the right way, but this is the way we're gonna do it. And um, I will actually let my husband talk to you about, I guess, the soil and everything that he put into it and anything else he wants to talk about with the wheat period. Okay. Yeah, the soil is basically the same. It's, um, it's topsoil, it's peat moss, um, and it's cow manure along with um, azomite, blood meal, bone meal, fertilizer, and um, a little lime, a little garden lime. Um, as you can see, we got the buckets really close to each other, and that's because corn pollinates itself. So the closer they are, the top of the corn stalks give off pollen, and that's what actually makes the, the ears of corn. So you plant them close together so that they'll pollinate their cell. And we starting a little late, but our growing season, like we don't really get our first frost until around December. So we have a little time to try and um, grow this corn. And if it doesn't grow, then we'll just, whatever, if, we, if the stalks doesn't um, fully grow, we'll take them and make uh, seeds out of them for next year. So as you can see, there are two plants, two seeds. So I'm actually going to just try and be gentle with it. And pull it apart. And that particular um, uh, brand of corn, um, it usually makes two uh, cobs per stock. So if you put two plants in there, you, if everything goes right, you'll get uh, four ears of corn per bucket. So that's done with the corn. When we finish, we're gonna go through and do all these buckets again with the corn and with the beans. Then we'll come back through water them in and that's pretty much it. All 
right guys, so finishing up beans, the green beans, me, and the corn. The only thing I have left to do is to get them watered in really good, which is... I didn't plant them too good. <laughs> they you fall. didn't plant them too good. I didn't say that though. Um, so we decided to put the green beans over here along with our eggplant that's starting to grow. Um, squash, as you can see, they're all growing. Okra. So I'm going to get the green beans watered in. And I got to come over and water my corn. The green beans are jade green beans from Johnny Seeds. Um, and the corn is peaches and cream. Yeah. I don't um, know why I like the name of that. It's supposed to be really sweet. I'm going to say the name sounds like it's going to be really good. I'm excited about the corn. And I think it's 60 or 80 days or something like that to it's supposed to produce. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, we have a pretty long growth season here in Zone 8B. It's our growing zone. So hopefully we can uh, get them to come up. I didn't do a very good job with this corn. That one. The rest of them, I think I did. Yeah, so we're going to get everything watered in, guys. and. We'll see you on the other side. All right, guys. So we've been showing you all a lot of our vegetables, um, squash, eggplant. We talked about everything that we're growing in the garden. And we've mentioned the herb garden a few times. I haven't yet given you guys a little tour of it. So that's coming very soon. But I am actually going to cook dinner tonight. And we're going to be cooking the food that we took from our garden and I'm going to show it to you guys. So I am out in the herb garden right now and I'm going to need some parsley um, to make our dinner. So I'm just going to clip some of this parsley off. Um, and guys, I don't know if there's a, a method to clipping it. I just kind of clip what I feel like I'm going to need for, um, for dinner. And I will either chop it by hand or put it in a little food processor, depending on how much work I want to do. And right now, I feel like doing work, so I'll probably just do it by hand. Um, but that could change. So, this actually is probably more than enough for what I need tonight. And I'm also going to clip some of my lemon thyme. This actually gives the vegetables... Um, really really good taste um smells like lemon mm, smells really good and fresh um uh, babe you like thyme in your food yes tell them you like my thyme only my lemon thyme yeah that little vegetable melody you put together is pretty good yeah well we'll see so that's what i will be making tonight um again i think that's more than enough so um Stay tuned because we will be showing you later what I'm cooking. So I have, we're going to have some okra, squash, zucchini, um, a few jalapenos from the garden, and some lunchbox orange sweet snack and peppers along with the parsley and the thyme that I just um, clipped. So stay tuned for, this is the before, stay tuned for the after. All right, so from the herb garden, I'm going to come over to um, our raised bed garden, and this is where I'm going to get some okra. Um, and I may clip a couple of peppers. I clipped some yesterday, so I already have some. But I, depending on what they look like, I may get some more. And so it's going straight from the garden to the kitchen. 
to the stove to our belly. And it's so nice to be able to come out to the garden and cut your own fresh vegetables versus having to hop in the car, go to the store. Um, so then I probably would have settled on having something different um, because I don't feel like driving to the store. But because I have enough okra in the garden, I don't have to do that. I can just clip some, gar some garden. I can just clip some okra tonight. Enough for us to eat tonight. I don't want to take that one off. Um, baby, see some more? Did I miss some? Um, I don't know. I think some of them, there. you can leave them another day. to make sure I get the ones that um, that are ready to um, And we already harvested squash the other day, so it's already in there. Yeah, so the squash that I'll be cooking tonight um, came from the garden as well. But we harvested it, I think, yesterday or the day before. So, again, we'll have some squash from the garden, some okra. Um, let me see. Jalapeno peppers, zucchini, zucchini, and a. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of the lunchbox orange snacking pepper just to give it a little color. And jalapeno. And the goal is to eventually have most of your food be grown right here. I mean, even as we start to get into uh, animals and um, meat, chicken, and beef, pork, whatever it is. But so goal. that's it for the. Sorry, babe. For the okay. vegetables. Um, the meat is actually going to be some chicken um, that my husband smoked in the smoker yesterday and then he um, cooked it in the smoker and some smoked beef short ribs that we put in the slow cooker this morning. So um, again, this is the beginning and I'll show you a little bit through the process and then the finished product. So stay tuned. Hi guys welcome to my kitchen and also welcome to the first edition of not hooping with swoops but cooking with swoops yes believe it or not i do cook and i actually enjoy it so what i am going to do tonight for dinner is make um i don't have a name for it but it's just this great wonderful vegetable medley um, that we usually put on top of rice or you can eat it by itself doesn't really matter but I wanted to just kind of show you guys um, what's in it and how I make mine. Um, I don't really use measurements. Like I don't use measuring cup spoons. I just kind of go um, off of feel, off of taste. But I will try to give you guys a little bit more information in case you're curious as to um, how much of this or how much of that I use. The first thing I do is um, chop up, you know, before I do the onion, I want to show some of you a trick in case you don't know with garlic. One of the, I absolutely love garlic. I put garlic in everything. Um, but one of the worst things about garlic for me is actually peeling it and I absolutely hate it. I love fresh garlic, but I hate peeling it. So a trick that I learned um, from one of the many cooking shows that I love to watch is just to take um, a clove. And if you have a big knife um, and you just place it on top of it, right just kind of place the knife on top of it with the skin on everything and you just kind of press down on it you can press hard soft but when you press down on it it kind of loosens up um i don't know what this is called the skin i kind of call it the paper sometimes i don't know but it's a lot easier to come off right and you take it off and there you have it trash simple and so then what I will do is actually I will chop up my garlic right um, chop it mince it get it as small as you want it doesn't have to be super um, diced or minced but 
it helps so that you're not, once it's done, if you're not eating um, big, large, huge chunks of garlic. So the first thing I do is kind of chop up the garlic, right? And I'm gonna move it to the side. By the way, um, I was super excited. My husband ordered this little cutting board for me. You see where I have my little compartments here? So I can place my garlic right there. Fancy, huh? I can place my garlic right here. So if I had my parsley time, I could place it here, but that's gonna be separate. So the first thing is to take your garlic, you cut it, move it to the side, and then take an onion. Um, you can use one large onion, two small onions, just depends on how much you want. We, we like onion, and it actually tastes very good in the dish. So take your onion, kind of cut it up. You don't have to cut the onion very small because I'm gonna put this onion into a skillet um, along with the garlic and I'm gonna let it saute. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna do an onion and a half. Unless my husband says he wants all of it, but I don't want too much onion. But there, so I'll do that. You can kind of pull it apart. But what I will do is kind of move it to the side and I'll put it on another little plate. All right, like that. By the way, this is my first time using this cutting board, so you guys uh, are special. And then, babe, if you wanna come over here. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of olive oil, or a lot of it. I love olive oil, right? So I'm gonna put a little olive oil. I'm gonna put just some pepper, however much you want. I'm gonna put a little pepper on my garlic and onion. I should have already had that on, that's my bad. But I'm gonna let that get hot. And I'm gonna put like, just a tad bit of butter to go with it, okay? So what I will tell you guys, while this is warming up and getting hot, you can turn if you want. While that's getting hot, I'm going to start with my zucchini. So what's going in it is zucchini from the garden, squash from the garden. So we're gonna start with our zucchini. So I just kind of chop the ends move them to the side, chop the ends, All right, move them to the side. And I cheat because my husband was so kind enough to get me a mandolin. So I cheat with mine. And then I just kind of take it. And what I do love about the mandolin is you can decide the thickness um, of your vegetables, right? So if you go one, one is the thinnest. So you can go one, two, or three. I'll leave mine on three. And you just chop away. If there's anybody that's never used a mandolin. Otherwise, this would take me, I'm lazy, this would take me more time to use a knife than to actually use a mandolin. Uh, word of advice, you know, as you start cutting, you don't realize how quickly you get down to your fingers, your nails. So be very careful as you're using it and as you're cutting. I have cut myself a few times. Um, I'm only gonna cut one right now just to kind of speed up the process and show you guys. But I will come back and do um, the other one later. Same thing with the squash, right? I'm gonna chop the ends. And you guys, this, this squash came from our garden, like super fresh, beautiful, huge, as well as the zucchini. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this, right? And yeah, it's kind of going all over the place, but you kind of get the picture. So I do that with the squash, with the zucchini. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is take it and then I just kind of, I just kind of chop it, right? There's no, no method to my madness. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
I just kind of chop it up and you'll see why later. Because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna mix it and we're gonna just put it on top of our rice. Um, so I just kind of take it, mix it all in, chop it up a little bit. But I think my oil is hot enough that I'm gonna take my onion and garlic and I'm gonna put it in the skillet. And I'm gonna let this saute for a little bit, right? And then as it gets hotter, the onion will kind of fall apart so you don't have the big pieces together. And everybody's taste is different. Like, I'm the type of person that likes to cook. Like, if I follow recipes, I'll use some of their stuff, but I always add my little touch to it. Um, so, I will add, I'm not gonna tell you to use a teaspoon of olive oil. You just, for me, I just kinda go off a of feel, right? So I'll put a little bit more olive oil. And right now, I have this on medium, medium to high, just cause I want this to kinda cook a little faster, right? And if you're curious, I actually have my rice cooking already. So the vegetables are gonna go on that rice. So I'm gonna let this cook. While that's cooking a little bit, I'm gonna let it brown, let the onion brown, get tender. But I'm gonna come and finish chopping up my squash, zucchini, right? So you cut that. Then I also take my okra. I'm gonna move this to the side. I do the okra just like I do the squash and zucchini. I cut the ends. That's not a good one, let's see. Nope. So I'll tell you guys, this because I want you to see this okra, for some reason is one that we probably left on too long and the inside's really dry and it's kind of tough. So this is not a good one, I'm not gonna use that one. So, let's see, so I'll cut the ends off, cut the ends off, and then I just chop it, right? You can make it however thin you want, however thick you want. Just be careful not to touch your finger or a nail, I've done that too. So I just cut the ends. Okra, same thing. Now, I'm gonna take, let's go with the jalapeno first. So I like hot things. My husband does not like hot things so much. But the jalapeno will actually give it a little kick. But a secret is, if you don't want it that spicy, you can cut it. For those that don't know, you cut it, right? So the seeds are what makes it hot and spicy. So you can cut it in half. And actually, see this is so handy. You can actually remove the seeds from it. So if you wanna see, these things right here will make it hot. So I'm gonna remove the seeds from this one. And if you happen to leave one or two in there, it's not, it's not that bad. But if you leave all those seeds in there, it will be very spicy. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this, but yeah. not many, because I know he doesn't want me to. And you can replant those seeds. Yes, you can. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my jalapenos, right? I'm gonna cut a little bit of that, and then I'm gonna take a couple of my lunchbox orange snacking peppers. I'm gonna do the same thing. And when I finish getting all that cut, meanwhile, I don't want this to burn. When I finish getting all of the vegetables cut, we'll come back and I'll show you the next steps into making the vegetable medley. I've gotten all of my okra, squash, zucchini, and Earl, come here. <laughs> so, I let my brother try this pepper. The first one that he took a bite of didn't have any seeds in it. So he was like, oh, that's good, it wasn't hot. And I took a bite of it and it burned my mouth. So then I gave him another piece with a seed in it and, um, he just ran outside. He did not want to talk about it. So, uh, but has a very good taste. Woo! Now, Woo! Am, uh, call the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm getting ready to. I don't want this to burn, guys. So, sorry that I'm turning my back on you. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Woo. So now I'm going to season this a little bit, right? Um, whatever taste you like. 
feel free to put whatever seasoning you want. Um, love black pepper. So I'm going to put some black pepper on it, however much you choose. I love for my food to be seasoned well. I like to taste my food. My husband likes to taste our food. So I use pepper. I use a little seasonal. Right? Just make sure I get enough over everything. Um, and again, I love garlic. So I put a little garlic powder. And not much, but just a dab of, I like the Himalayan pink salt. Right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit in my hand and just sprinkle a little bit on the food, okay? Now I'm gonna take this, come on babe, and I'm gonna add it to what was already in my skillet, which was the onion and the garlic. All right, so I'm gonna add it, add it, add it, add it, add it. Add it, add it, add it, add it. Okay. So I get that in there. One more olive oil on top. This time I kind of put a little bit more. Again, I love olive oil and I like to just try to cover all of it. And take some butter. Throw the butter in the middle. Sorry. Don't talk about me and my butter. I love butter. And then I'm going to turn it down. Right? Because then I'm going to just let it cook. But the last thing I'm going to add to it will be... Sorry, let me go back. So when I say it doesn't really matter, if you want your vegetables smaller, then you can just chop them a lot smaller than this. And to me, it doesn't really matter because as they cook and they saute and they get softer, it's a lot easier to cut them. And like I said, we're gonna put it over our rice anyway, so it doesn't really matter um, the size of them. The last thing I'm gonna add is over here. So my parsley and my thyme that I chopped outside, or I mean that I cut outside from the herb garden. I'm just gonna use my mini food processor because I'm too lazy to cut it myself. So I'm just gonna chop it up very finely, right? Okay. Mm, it smells so good. Just chopped it up with the food processor. And again, that's lemon thyme and parsley from the garden. And then I'll turn it down to about three, which is low. And just kind of, you can use a spoon if you want. I like using my hand. And I just kind of sprinkle the parsley and the thyme on top, All right? Just gives it a really good taste. It's fresh. Okay. And then the last thing I do is get my lid, which this this skillet, and I'll just tell you guys. So our videos aren't perfect all the time, and this skillet did not come with a lid. So if you are like me and you have a lot of skillets and can't find the right size lid, it doesn't matter as long as you can cover it up. So, oh, sorry, I didn't leave out one step. And you don't have to because I already have garlic in it, but I also like to buy this, gar this garlic that's already chopped and just throw a little bit more in there. Just give it however much garlic you want. And I love garlic, so there you go. <coughs> and then I'm just going to put the lid on, let it simmer um, until it just softens, which usually takes about, once I get the lid on, 10-15 um, minutes, and it's ready to go. And you don't have to come and take the lid off, you don't have to check it again until you're ready to eat. So what I'll do is I'm going to let this cook 10-15 minutes, and when we come back, I'm going to mix it in with my rice and I'll show you the finished product. All right guys, so finished product is, and you don't have to take the rice and mix it. You know, some people may not want vegetables. Some people may want to keep it separate. Um, we end up mixing ours on our plate anyway. So I just 
usually take the rice out of the pot, um, put it in with the veggies, mix it up, and feel free to add whatever. You want more seasonings, you want some more parsley on top, some butter, um, whatever. So, um, let me try to make it a little neat for you. And um, that's the end result, the finished product. With some squash, zucchini, okra, jalapeno peppers, uh, yellow snacking peppers, and some rice. And I will actually show you once we get our plates fixed with this and our chicken ribs. And let's not forget the Sunday tea. The Sunday Sun Tea that my husband, I'm going to give him credit, my husband made this tea today. Um, some good old nice sweet sun tea. There's nothing better than um, making your own and especially on a Sunday, just hanging out at home. So we'll have some tea with our dinner and hopefully if anybody tries the recipe, you'll like it and let me know how it turns out. All right guys, so this is the finished dish. Again, it's okra, squash, zucchini, jalapeno peppers, and lunchbox orange snacking peppers. And we just put it over some rice. You can put whatever vegetables you want in it. Those just happen to be the vegetables that came from our garden. So, um, I hope you all enjoy it. If you try it, let me know. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell on our channel and let us know what you think. And until next time, everybody be safe, be healthy, and stay blessed. We'll see you next time on Back to Our Roots Homestead. Yeah, right now, right now, yeah, yeah. Back to our roots, back to our roots Back to our roots